If you're a Python developer and you're still using pip instead of uv, then it's time for an upgrade. So uv is a super fast Python package manager. So at the core, it's a replacement for pip install your library name. You can do that using uv and you can do it a lot faster and really fast. You can sometimes get up to a 100x performance increase over simply using pip. But beyond just helping you with installing packages and doing that really quickly, uv can actually do a lot more. Because as I will show you in this video, uv can also help you to simply create new Python projects using a boilerplate, adding git ignores, creating your virtual environments, managing dependencies for your main project as well as your development environment. And it does all of that with just a few simple commands that you can run via the terminal. So my goal with this quick video is to give you a quick walkthrough of what UV is, how to set it up and convince you that you really need to start using this as a Python developer. And now if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Dave Abelar, founder of Data Lumina. We build custom AI solutions for our clients. I've been working with AI for over 10 years. And here on this channel, I share all the practical takeaways that you need to know as a Python and developer building AI systems. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. And now UV is super simple to set up and you only need to know a few commands to really make the most out of this. So I highly recommend for you to follow along because once you've seen it and tasted what it's like, then it's really hard to go back. So this readme file here on GitHub is uh, in the description. You can click on the link and then you'll find the specific installation instructions for your operating system. So either Mac OS and Linux or Windows. You can use a simple curl command or look what it looks like on Windows. On macOS, you can also simply do a brew install uv, which is my favorite way of doing it. And then once installed, you can do a simple uv dash dash help in the terminal to see if it's installed correctly and also get an overview of all of the commands, which we will go through in this video. And now there are a lot of things that you can do with uv, a lot of commands, but actually my favorite way to show people why uv is awesome and why to use it is to take them through my new project workflow. So I'm going to quickly show you that, what you can do with it, how fast it is, and then we're going to reverse engineer that. Because one of the major issues that I've always had with working with Python, and I'm, I've been working with this language for over 10 years, is the whole process of starting up a new project. So you need to create a GitHub repository, you need to set up your virtual environment and install the requirements and then also freeze them and manage all of that. That whole process is very annoying. UV and the process that I have for that will take care of all of that. And it will completely change how you set up your Python projects. So let's say I want to create a new repository within my YouTube repositories folder. I open up a quick terminal in here. And then what I can do in here is I can do a UV init and then type the project name. So let's say new AI project. So now you can see it created this new folder with a bunch of files in there already. And now what I can do is I can change directory into the folder. So let's go CD into new AI project. And then I can open up the folder in cursor. So this also works with VS Code. Um, cursor dot, and then it opens up in your IDE. And now you can see that there are already a lot of files here that you typically need for every Python project. So there's a git ignore file here with all the typical ex excludes that you need for when working with Python. There's a Python version. There's a quick hello.py file that you can use to test if your Python version is working. There's a pyproject.toml, which we'll get to in, into it a bit. And then there's a readme file placeholder. All right, so then the next thing that you always need to do when you set up a new Python project is to create your environment and then install the dependencies that you want to use. So let's say I open up a terminal over here and to this project, I want to add OpenAI, FastAPI and Pydentic. So instead of doing the pip install, what I can do is I can do uv add and I can do OpenAI. I can do, let's say we add Pydentic and also FastAPI. Now here is where uv comes in with the magic. So first of all, look at how fast this will go. Boom, and we're done. But now also look at the pop-up that I got over here. We notice a new environment has been created. So simply by running uv add, it created the virtual environment folder that you need. So this is already super awesome. We can come into any Python project, just think about what we want, run uv add, and it will create the virtual environment. And then it will add those dependencies to the pyproject.toml that you can see over here. So the structure that we have is we have a name, we have a version, we can add a description, we have a readme file which Python version we're using. And then here you can see the dependencies. So this is going to replace the requirements.txt. And now in a similar way that we just added these dependencies, we can also remove them. So I can also do a UV remove. And let's say we want to get rid of fast API since we're not using it. There you go, and now it's gone. This was always super annoying with pip because when you're working on a project, you're trying different things, you're installing libraries and libraries, and then when you want to remove something, you need to sync that requirement.txt. And also by default, if you do a pip freeze, it gets very bloated with also all of the sub dependencies. And UV keeps this super lean with just the actual libraries that you installed. And now we can also manage different sets of dependencies because in real world Python projects, you likely want to make a distinction between what you run locally, what you test, and what you have in a production environment or in your development environment. So what I can do is I can do a UV add, 
And then I can do, for example, an IPy kernel, which I like to use to run Python in the interactive mode. And then I do a dash dash dev. So this will now create a new dependency group and it will add the IPy kernel. So what I can now do is I can come in here and I can run this using the interactive Python session. This way you can create a clear distinction between your production environment, local dev, and maybe other environments that you're working with to keep them very lean and minimal and only add what you need. So we now have our project pretty much ready to go. So what we can now do is we can do a simple commit and use the GitHub CLI to quickly push this to a private GitHub repository. And there we go, we created the repository. All the files are in there, it's set to private, and the command that I just ran is over here as well. So this is not UV, this is the GitHub CLI tool, but I really like to use this together because it's so easy with UV to set up a project like this and then using the GitHub CLI tool to quickly push it to a GitHub repository. And this way, whenever you have this idea, right? Because nowadays with all of these AI assisted coding tools and Claude code, right? It cannot just be me, but I have constant ideas all of the time. Where it's like, oh, I actually want to try that. I want to see if I can build that. So that process from going from a simple idea to setting up a project to setting up the requirements and then pushing it to a GitHub repository, that can now all be done in a matter of 15 seconds or so if you follow these commands over here. All right, so that was really fast, how to set up UV and how I use it and why it's awesome. But there are a couple of other things that UV can do and that you need to be aware of. So first of all, UV is from the company Astral, the same team behind Ruff, which is a really awesome Python linter. If you're not using Ruff, check that out as well. You should really use it. All right, and then we have to starting a new project with UV. You just saw that it's creating the project structure but we can also run Python files with UV. So I just show you how to do it with the interactive Python window. But if I come in here and I do UV run and we do a hello.py, you can see that we can run this. So no need to plug in Python. And one of the cool things is that UV can actually manage your Python version, which is the next point that I want to get into. So you don't even need to install Python on your system. You can just install UV and then through UV, you can manage Python. So here you can see if you want to install specific versions or multiple versions, and then you can also pin the default version that you want to use. So I can, for example, come in here and I can you, you do a UV Python list and I can see all of the Python versions that are currently available on my system. And then we have the development versus production dependencies, which I also gave you a sneak preview of already. And then let's cover some of the other essential commands that are in here. So we have the init my project. You already saw that. Then we have adding and removing libraries with add and remove. Then we have UV sync, which is a new one. So let me show you what it looks like. This is super helpful. So whenever you're working with the team and you're cloning a repository and you're completely new in there, you can simply run UV sync to lo look at the pyproject.toml and to quickly set everything up. So if I simply remove the virtual environment and then I come in here, so let's say this is a new project, you're cloning this from a repository, I can simply run a UV sync and there we go. See, it's instant. It creates the virtual environment and it also installs all of the dependencies in here it activates the environment and I am good to go. And one of the nice things about using UV is that it's also super compatible with all the projects that are still using pip. So no need to migrate anything. If you have a requirements.txt like this, for example, and you can simply come in here and just run UV pip install our requirements.txt and it will then go ahead and install everything within the virtual environment. And that's pretty much all you need to know right now about using UV. Now there's a lot more that you can do with it, especially when it comes to CI CD pipelines or working with Docker. It's all possible using UV. So if you wanna learn more about that, I highly recommend just do a deep dive on the official documentation. All right, so now that you understand UV and know why it's so awesome, it's time to start building, right? And the fact that you're a Python developer tells me that you probably over the past weeks or months have dabbled with something related to AI, right? Building AI agent, because let's face it, you can't get around it because this technology is so awesome. Now, now, the, one of the big problems is that there is so much information and noise out there right now within the world of AI. A lot of developers feel really overwhelmed. So that's why I created this video. It's a one hour course teaching you how to build effective AI agents in pure Python. No complex abstractions or frameworks, just a few simple patterns that we use inside our development agency to deliver our client projects. So if that sounds interesting, go check this out right now.